Hello everyone, this is JinxJK here, and in this week's video, we're going to be talking about some advanced tips to take your game to the next level. Now, this does come with a disclaimer. Please do not focus on these tips until you've covered the basics, knowing your synergies, knowing the item combinations, and most importantly, learning how to play and understanding the economy. So for tip number one, we got increasing the odds. What do I mean by that? We're going to be removing champions from the pool to increase the odd of getting champions that you do need. Let's take a look at this chart here. Now in Teamfight Tactics, there is a shared pool of champions. So overall, there are 39 of each champion. So there's only 39 Tristanas, 39 Graves, 39 Cassidans in the pool. We can use this knowledge to help increase our odds of hitting uh, the units that we do need. Now, this isn't going to be, oh, over the course of the game, it's going to help a lot more, right? But for tier one units, you know, it's going to be very, very marginal uh, odds that you're increasing. But let's say you start getting to those four cost units. If, uh, for example, let's say you're looking for a Cho Gath. Uh, anytime you're hitting a four cost unit, Aurelian Soul Kindred, you take them out of, the, uh, out of the pool, you hold them on your bench, and therefore we're increasing your odds of hitting that Cho Gath as you are removing other four cost units from the pool that you no longer need. Now, you have to be careful how you go about this. You, the only way you can uh, follow this tip is if you have the bench slots for it. For it. So let's talk about bench management. Uh, let's say over here I'm missing a Tristana and I want to increase my odds of hitting the Tristana. Uh, let's put all the units that we need over here. And now what you start doing is you buy one cost units that you don't need. So all of these slots here, if they start getting full, we're going to be replacing them. So it's going to look something like this. We're going to be rolling after this round. So I buy all the one cost that are not Tristana. So my bench is full, we roll. Buy one cost that's not Tristana, we roll. Nothing, roll, roll. So now I've increased my odds. And as soon as you hit a unit that you need, let's say we need the vein, you sell one of the units you no longer need and you keep going, sell. And it looks something like that. And we hit the Tristana. So now that we know about the shared pool, we can talk about tip number two, which is blocking or denying champions from other people in the lobby. What you want to do is you want to scout to see if people are collecting any important units. For example, if they're trying to three star a unit or if there's a really important four cost unit like Draven that they're trying to make it into a two star. Uh, so let's take for example uh, here, he has two two-star blitzes, so he's most likely going for a three-star blitz and uh, Tristana's on the bench, most likely going for uh, Tristana three. So what we can do now is take any Tristana's that we see uh, that will be coming along to take them out of the pool to give him lower odds of hitting that champion. Um, so anytime that you're going to be rolling and this is coming along, if you see a Blitzcrank and, uh, or a Tristana, now I'm just going to be grabbing them to deny those champions uh, from the pool. Uh, let's, uh, what well, we're going to be leveling up here anyways. And let's roll a bit. So I'm going to be keeping in mind uh, Blitz, Tristana. If we see them, we're going to be looking to take them out of the pool. And again, you never force this. If they happen to show up, you grab them. If not, uh, then that's completely fine as well. 
Another way you can block or deny uh, champions or items are at the carousel. Uh, now, unfortunately, I'm picking last in uh, this uh, scenario, but if you're lower on the list, you want to look at the first, second place guy because they're usually going to be your biggest uh, competitors. So you look at their boards, you see what items are they collecting, you know, maybe a spatula, so they need that second spatula, and you look to grab that away from them. So for the third and final tip, we have counter positioning. Now you want to, basically what this is, is you want to position your units to counter uh, specifically, in a, for say in a one for one scenario, uh, to counter the enemy player's uh, units. So the first thing that comes to mind is, for example, a Blitzcrank. Uh, you want to look through the boards and if anyone is playing a Blitzcrank, what you want to do is, because Blitzcrank will always pull your unit in the corner. Uh, so, for example, over here, sometimes you even want to look at not what's on the field, but what they're holding on the bench. Because he can tech in a Blitz last second to try and counter me. So what I can do then is last second, before the timer runs out, we're going to wait here, we're going to play out the scenario. So the timer is running out. We don't want him to grab our Varus as he is our important unit. We swap. Now, if there was a Blitz rank here, it would grab the Ari. We do not care about the Ari. That's our, you know, meat shield. Grab the Ari. Uh, there you go. Scenario number two that I can think of is Kassadin. Kassadin has a powerful ultimate in that, uh, in which that he mana burns a unit. So next, what you, what you can do with this is, let's take a look here once they rearrange. We'll get our item here, or no items, that's completely fine. So we look at the boards. Okay, so let's say you want to counter the Sejuani if we were to go against it. Then you place your Cassadin right in front of that Sejuani, and now Cassadin will be mana burning uh, the Sejuani to keep her from ulting. And I can put Nar here as well so he doesn't take as much damage. And let's see, I, I don't know if we're going to be getting this guy. There's a chance we get him as well. But you can see kind of what uh, that looks like here. So there we go, our Cassadin. In this scenario, uh, I believe he's going to be hitting the S S Cho. So he's hitting the Cho. The Cho'Gath cannot ult right now, buying us enough time for Arnar to go off and uh, basically wombo combo his team. So that's how you can use Kassadin uh, in a scenario. Uh, the third and final counter positioning team, uh, counter positioning strategy that I think is very important is against assassins. Uh, let's see, I don't think he's playing. Maybe he has one or two assassins. Let's check here. He has one assassin. Uh, we'll play it out because I'll show you the positioning for that. What you want to do is you want to put all your important units in the front row and your meat shields in the back. Let's go ahead and level here. So we don't care about Ari dying. We don't care about Nar dying. So it would look like something like this. Now again, he only has one assassin, but imagine that he had six. What's going to be happening is because of the way uh, assassins are coded, they always go invisible and always jump to the farthest unit diagonal from them. Uh, so that's exactly what happens. They hit a unit that's not important. Our Kassadin is mana burning. And that's uh, the last and final way uh, that you can use your units to counter position. If you've had some fun interactions with uh, positioning or counter positioning, please let me know uh, in the comments below. And uh, I just wanted, so that brings us to the end of the video. I just want to say thank you so much uh, for watching up to this point. I really, really do appreciate it. I do stream Monday through Friday. So if you want to check out the links in the below, uh, thank you guys once more. Have a great day.
So if we take a look at this chart here, in Teamfight Tactics, there is 